So what we have here is an Automation Direct PLC that's acting as our loop controller. I'll open this box up very briefly to show you what it looks like. We've got the PLC up there. It's taking in the 4 to 20 milliamp signal from our level transmitter. It's doing the PID calculations, sending out a different 4 to 20 milliamp signal to drive the valve open and shut. On the screen, this is called the HMI, by the way, is what you're going to be buying with your PLCs. We've got this program to show us all the pertinent variables. We've got PV, which stands for what? Pressure. Process variable. variable. Process variable. SP stands for? Set point. Set, set point, point, exactly. And then we have output. So right now we've got a set point of 50, a process variable of 50.1, so we're very close to set point. And our output, our valve, is about 38% open. We're in automatic mode. If I go over here to change the set point, I can call for a different set point value. Let's say instead of 50%, I want 60. So I'll hit 60 and enter that. You can hear the valve hiss. The valve just went all the way shut, so now it's building up level. Watch the level build, 53, 54, 55, 56. As the level builds up, now the valve begins to open, 20%, 30%, and we stabilize at a process variable of about 50, or 60, I mean. Mm -hmm. This uh, display also has a graph, so we can actually watch the level build up. Right now, the graph is marching over uh, one uh, increment every uh, five seconds. So you can see the level go up, and it looks like we overshot just a little bit, then we settle down to set point. We also have the ability to change set point right here. So if I hit the set point button, clear, and go, let's say, with 70%, you hear the valve hiss again. It went shut. It's going to be building up a level. And now as the level rises, it's going to achieve the new set point value, and the valve will start to open up again to equalize. So this is an example of a working process that happens to be controlled by a PLC. But the math that the PLC is doing is the same math as what's being done by our distributive control system or the panel mounted loop controllers. It's the same PID math. Now that's something we study winter quarter, so you have to wait almost a full year before you study that. In this one week intro course, all we're doing is hooking up a working loop and seeing kind of a bird's eye view how all the parts work with each other. Now there's one more point I was going to ask, about, uh, ask you about this process, and that is whether or not we want to have the controller direct acting or reverse acting. I can't recall if that was part of today's reading assignment or not. It was. It was, it was okay. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to have a direct acting controller? Well, it means that it's working directly in proportion to what you said is your set point, right? And, and, and uh, what was the, the other word? Process but, variable? No, no, yeah, but what was the other Reverse. Word? Output? Reverse. Or reverse, sorry. Reverse is just the opposite. If it, if it said 30%, it will actually be operating at 70%. Not quite. Uh, not, not quite the right concept. And that's okay. We're just, we're just stepping into this. But it refers to directions of action. So let's say that the process variable signal, or in this case our level, is rising. If the PV signal is rising, a direct acting controller will make a rising output. Right. If it's reverse acting, a rising PV signal will cause the output to go down. So let's think about this process. You've seen it physically. We've got water going to the top of a tube. We're controlling a valve letting water out. So as the liquid level builds up, what do we want the controller to tell the valve to do? Open or shut? Open. Open. So do we want a rising signal to the valve as the level rises, or do we want a decreasing signal to the valve as the level rises? Rise. So we want a direct, direct acting controller. Rise. In this particular screen, we can switch over and set this to direct action right there. That is critically important to have set right. If it's reverse acting, it'll do exactly the wrong thing. As liquid level builds up, it will start to shut the valve, which will make the level build up even faster. It just runs away to oblivion. Yeah, thermal runaway if it's a temperature process. So we can also, like I said, go down and set point, set point value. We can clear this here, go back down to a set point of 50. And now you heard the valve hiss. It just opened up the valve all the way to 100%. It's draining water as fast as it can. That's going to cause the water level to go down. As the water level comes down, the controller will start pinching off in the valve and regulating, and hopefully get to 50% without too much overshoot. On this particular process, it drains a lot slower than it fills. So we'll be standing here for a while longer waiting for it to get to 50. It's already at 60.5. Yeah, there we go, about 60% right here. So we're about halfway there to set point. So that's an example of working.